Hello and welcome to another episode of the How Long To Beat podcast. I'm Rick and with me are Alex, Paula and hang on, who's this? It's only our first guest of the show, friend of the forum and I'm trying to think of a way to get Monster Prom and MVP to fit together. They're <laughs> so close and it's just not quite happening. Monster Prom VP, <laughs> Dragon, uh, aka Dragon. Sure, that way. Hey everyone, uh, thank you for having me. Good I'm on. so honored to be the first guest. Yeah, I mean it only makes sense. as well as right. Dragon. Yeah, a little bit of inside baseball. Dragon is low key the reason that season two got off the ground. Mm-hmm. So I just gave you guys the first push. I don't say I'm the reason. <laughs> we'll we'll have a little circle jerk of thanking each other. Is what we'll do. <laughs> and when we finish with that, the itinerary is slightly different this week compared to what we'd normally do. Um, so we're going to have a little getting to know you session with Dragon. Call it an interview call it a round table on the on the the syria palestine issue whatever you want to call it um then we're going to talk about what dragon has beaten and retired we're going to talk about what we're all playing um and then dragon has come with a topic which i'm going to let him spoil later on in the episode uh, and we'll finish off with the game you all know and love and love to know that we're about to say together it's how, how, long, long, to how, long, to how long to be the, the game, game. The game. <laughs> Oh, oh, I hope that comes through. It didn't. It didn't on. on it's my... funny. I think you and I, Rick, were on the same, and then Paula and Dragon were on the same. So there was two as good as no solid one was ones. alone. <laughs> exactly. No one was alone. <laughs> Almost. Dear me. So, uh, Alex, do you want to take us away with the interview questions, seeing as you yes. drafted them? Yes, I did. So these are basically just some of the questions that. Um, we've answered throughout the podcast. Um, but I want to know about you, Dragon. To start off, what part of the world do you live in? And how does that affect your gaming? Well, I live in beautiful Uruguay. And for those who don't know that it's most of the world, I, <laughs> I live in country in South America, south of Brazil, east of Argentina. Uh, pretty close to uh, Poland here, actually. Just... Uh, Argentina separates us, so... Mm. Oh, Latino friends! Hey. Woo! Latin, Latino friends! Oh, friend! Like I've, Juan! I've been we'll joking to Juan later. that you all should, at some point, because we seem to have a lot of either Latina or or Spanish speaking, but like all Spanish from different areas, and I would love to see a podcast where you all talk together with very slightly different forms of Spanish. <laughs> yeah, we, that would be amazing. <laughs> You, you say think that, that uh, mm-hmm. Paul and me have similar accents, but mm-hmm. the Chile accent and the Uruguay accent are different. <laughs> Let's just They're say very that. different. See, no. I don't understand well, we, uh... Spanish very well, although I did do it in university. But I would still love to hear that because I can imagine it's just very special. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting, no doubt. Uh, well, uh, the other part of the question: How does that affect my mm-hmm. gaming? Um, that it has changed over over time, but when I was a little, when I started gaming, like imagine six years old, seven years old, uh, piracy was the way of life. Basically, there was no way to actually get a a, a real game, so to speak, a cheat copy. Uh, for example, I remember I had a, a quote unquote NES at home. But it's not called the Nintendo Entertainment System. It was called the Family Entertainment System. So it was more akin to the Famicom, actually. Oh. <laughs> they like took the Japanese uh, name. It actually and the it into yeah, it. yeah, basically, <laughs> and it actually uh, the cartridges were on top, not like a VHS tape. So it was oh. uh, the console itself was more like uh, a, uh, a Famicom. Mm. Yeah, because I know America and, later uh, on the cartridges. Top Oh, sorry. Yeah, but we only had the... No, no, it's fine. Mm-hmm. And actually, the cartridges we have are not the NES ones. The big ones are just small. Hmm. Yeah, I, so actually, like I Famicom. think my... Yeah, uh, actually, my brother took all the all those old cartridges with him to his house. If not, I could show them to you, at least not to the to the audience. But And we also had the, a little adapter to convert NES cartridges to play in our family entertainment system. Oh, so you can play like. I'm imagining just how top heavy that becomes then. (laughs) Yeah. And also, since uh, everything was uh, a pirate copy, basically, sometimes we got ROM hacks that uh, were passed as real games. (laughs) Like, I had Mario 10. 
Oh my god. Which was uh, a Shaggy Chan Kung Fu rom hack. Oh my god. That's pretty weird. Oh, that okay. That's gotta be weird because, like, I imagine at some point you're like growing up, and then like, did you do you remember a time when you realized that you had been playing ROM hacks, or was it like, did you always know that they were ROM hacks? Uh, no, I didn't. No, no, but mm-hmm. my thing was, mm, this doesn't seem like Mario. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We're four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> it's like an alternate history sort of thing. Like, hang on, when did Zelda's tunic? Wow, wow, I'm showing my ignorance there. When did Link's tunic become green? That joke was ruined. Let's move on. <laughs> That's a... You nice. tried. Go nice. start. Um, interesting. Yeah, uh, well... yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess I guess one of the things I want to know too then, like, so what's your gaming background or like preference then? So you've told us a little bit about the early e- eras. I'm guessing some Nintendo in there, but what else? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh... I'm on console side. I'm mostly a Nintendo Nintendo person. Hmm. Uh, actually, the only console I own now is the Switch because uh, taking it back to year away, consoles are freaking expensive here. Uh, like, imagine what consoles are retailing with last gen consoles four hundred dollars normally mm-hmm. uh, in your side. Well, here uh, let's say it were a thousand. <laughs> Jeez. So yeah, like. Prohibitive expensive. Actually, my Switch, uh, I got it when I traveled to the UK. Yes. Oh. I remember you telling me that. Yeah. And my 2DS, actually, I got it from the US uh, that I got it carried over uh, to here. I got it sent via shipment because it was cheaper to buy in there and send it here than buy it here. <laughs> Ridiculous. And I got a 2DS, not a 3DS, because... The limit to get something without taxes from the U.S. is two hundred dollars. If it gets to two hundred dollars, uh, yeah, I had to pay taxes and I had to pay like two hundred dollars more. So two years it was. Oh, wow. Okay, that's interesting. So all right, yeah, uh-huh. huh. So uh, do you like PC game to it all then, or is it just like? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, early, early on in my life, it was almost all PC gaming. Uh, I had that that family in the gaming system. I also had a an SNES that may have been original. I haven't found why it isn't. I actually have the, the box, so that seems fairly, fairly all right. <laughs> and then uh, I have a PS1 and a PS2 that nice. already came shale broken. You bought it on stores shale broken, or in official stores. <laughs> oh, wait, really? Like on the shelves? <laughs> ah, that's great. Yeah, that's how it goes. And then you bought the, the illegal copies <laughs> that were like, Super, super cheap. Then I burned them in my house. But uh, I shouldn't be confessing this much. <laughs> with how popular the show is. But Don't worry. No, keep going. Just ignore the red blinking light and the sound of sirens in the distance. It's fine. It's the wild, wild <laughs> south right over here. Is what's going on. I'm like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, that's dear. amazing. Too I mean, much. when but, you make it so uh, prohibitive, that yeah. makes sense though, right? Like, I mean, if they're going to be that expensive there, obviously you're going to have to sell consoles that are jailbroken at this point. Right? And then you've got a cycle where it gets more expensive to do it legitimately yeah. just to break even and it's whole thing. Mm. Pretty much. Uh, fun little, fun little tidbit. Uh, when Smash Brawl came out, uh, here it was one fifty dollars, one copy, uh, original. Ew. So Hello. yeah, and I went for PC gaming most of the time. Uh, also piracy at my early years, but then Steam came along, and Steam yes is cheap. <laughs> mm. So that's cool. Steam yeah. is such a savior in this side of the world for uh, yeah. gaming. Steam, Steam is the best. And now we have also uh, uh, also online storefronts for many consoles. I tend to buy most of my games uh, digitally on the Switch too. Hmm. Or I brought them from the US, as I said, with my 2DS. And is it like regionally priced on the on the console storefronts as well, where they where they sort of ratchet it down? Uh, I actually use the US store because there's not a Uruguay store. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Isn't... Yeah, right. Have, uh, uh, on Chile, you have I, a store? Uh, Paula? We have a store, but it is a little bit more expensive to get Nintendo games like in the Chile store than to just have a US store. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah, what? it is. Like, um, and I think that like, each up on the on Chile is like quite recent. Mm. Because like, yeah, I, I, I think, think like yeah. two or three years ago, we got it. 
and it is not worth it. <laughs> Let me tell you, it is not worth it. <laughs> and yeah. I don't know which other countries of Latin America have um, and, and Egypt. Like, hmm. I think Egypt Argentina has one now. I think, not sure on that one. Hmm. Maybe. But yeah, so that's the way of life here. I have Steam and uh, US purchases that may be on a gray scale in legality. I mean, it's it's about as close to legal as you're going to get yeah. without being basically. legal. I did some real quick research here, but I guess from what I can see here, basically Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, and Peru seem to be the ones who have like a limited version of the Nintendo eShop. Um, so, sounds like you are better off just being in the US store. <laughs> I don't know what it means by a limited version either. I was like, wait, limited? I'm like, what does that even mean? It's because Uh, you don't get all the games from the eShop. I think mm -hmm. right now, at least for Tilly, you have like a first party Nintendo games, maybe some third party that are exclusives. And don't quote me on that, but I think there's like a couple of indie games that are like the most popular. Mm. That's all you have. In the to the store. Okay. Hmm. I, I like how uh, Rick and Alex are like, wow, that's crazy. And I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, it's <laughs> I, I probably just says something to the position we're in, Alex. It just baffles yeah. me that like they wouldn't let you buy the games. I, I, I I'm low key struggling to get my head around. Like I, I get it on an intellectual level, but mm-hmm. it also just doesn't make any sense. Why would you do that? Especially digitally. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I do understand, I, you know, like, physical sense. Because, like, yeah, all right. It's a nightmare shipping things all across the world. I get it. But, like... And different languages on the boxes and everything else. Yeah, that you, you can make a case for that. No pun intended. <laughs> but digitally, I'm <laughs> just like, let people like... buy it! <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... I mean, the one thing that comes to mind is, like, since software is really, really expensive over here. Mm. No, hardware is super expensive over here. Maybe they don't find it as worth it to... Sell the software. Yeah. Yeah. So, and since it is free and free, and you can have like uh, an account like in any each of pretty much, uh, they just may find it easier to for people to do that. Honestly, yeah, probably right. And then it's probably also a way for them to just kind of be like, because I I assume they just they just assume that like um, Spanish is the most common language in South America, so they just do it up in america right they just translate into the languages and they go all right here you go go buy it in america Hmm. and come down right like i'm sure it's their one shop fits all solution region free the games put as many languages as possible onto the games let people buy them all over it's the same as what they mostly do in the eu store to be fair most games are in english french italian german spanish so Hmm. if, if you're in one of the um Poor Portuguese. Southern European <laughs> countries, a Poland or a Hungary or, or an Austria, like you either deal with one of those languages or you or you don't. But the and it's probably a similar situation to you guys where most things are going to be translated into English or Spanish, i.e., a language you can work with anyway. So it, it the the problem almost yeah. solves itself. It's just dumb <laughs> in in the way that yeah. it, it plays out. Is all. <laughs> I think yeah. like a lot of games would be like in Spanish, but uh, interesting story. Uh, there are actually a lot of games that people here can't play because they don't speak English. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, not actually, really gaming is one of the motives I learned English. <laughs> it's... Oh, English. I got better at it at least. <laughs> well, I was gonna say like English isn't. You know, it's not that widely spoken. I mean, it's widely spoken, but it's not that widely spoken, right? And so it's like, yeah, not I mean, natively, basically. Yeah, <laughs> Japanese even less. But <laughs> yeah, Japan's like, I translate these games. <laughs> well, this is an interesting thing. That's a whole other topic too, actually. Like game translation and stuff. Like, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine. There's so many languages in this world. Anyway, why don't we move along? Then uh, we're learning something new every day. Um, so let's go to the next question. Then we sort of co- covered one of them, which was your console of choice. Or actually, no, what is your console of choice? Like, if you had to pick all of yours besides playing right now, what is your gaming console of choice? Uh, the one I play most now is PC, probably, which is not a console unless you count it as one. I but, <laughs> uh, 
my favorite console of all time is actually not Nintendo, even though I'm a Nintendo fan. Mm -hmm. It's the PS2. Solid. I just had a wide variety of games that I got from it. Mm. Hot take. So... The, the PS2 library is excellent. The PS2 hardware is mediocre. Oh, yeah. that, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> I can't even play it though at my room. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> The one reason everyone bought the PS2. DVDs! Uh, literally. <laughs> Before we had any games, we had one of those little remote adapters and a DVD of The Simpsons to go with it. <laughs> Seriously. Um, nice. What's your favorite PS2 game, actually? So uh, now these aren't questions on here. I didn't let you prepare for this. I just want to know. <laughs> uh, the one that definitely comes to mind first, that's not an exclusive for PS2, but I played it on PS2, is Resident Evil 4. Oh, that's right. Man, Ooh. after my own heart. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I love that game. Uh, and I had so much, it. and I, I quickly, uh, I quickly swapped uh, between games because it has a really big, not not only many games but different uh, type of games. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's everything one thing. Like uh, some Nintendo platforms uh, consoles will be like we have platformers, and some more. <laughs> yeah, that's the interesting thing about. Especially the PlayStation 2 is that in the case of Nintendo, you can ask any person who has a Nintendo platform and they will give you more or less the same answers. For the PlayStation, if you ask them what are their top 10 favorite games or even top five, you will have like a wide variety of answers. Yeah. Yeah, you ask 10 people, you get 50 different games. But that's the thing, like Nintendo, Nintendo only make 10 games per. <laughs> or thereabouts. And it's like that. What do you expect? Right. And to be fair, they're like genre defining games. Every almost pretty much every time, right? They just like <laughs> and drop Pikmin. something. Yeah, what? Fair. Oh, and Pikmin. Said, and Pikmin. <laughs> Agreed. Um, <laughs> uh, nice. Okay. Cool. Zing. Uh, I got uh, two more. Two more for you there, Dragon. And then then you can take a rest. But not really. Should I ask what you be beat? <laughs> no rest for you. <laughs> um, so no rest for the wicked. We asked this question a, a few weeks ago, and it proved interesting. Um, I'm wondering what game like got you into gaming. So, what game got me into gaming is not the same thing as what was my first game. I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, my first game, just to answer that quickly, was Doom. Great game for a five-year-old. I uh, oh played on my <laughs> cousin's PC. That's fine. Uh, Shareware, baby. But the game that got me into gaming, I would say, was... I played it on also my cousin's uh, place. was on his SNES. It was uh, Mega Man X, I would guess. Nice. Hmm. Uh, I remember actually going to his house just to play the game. <laughs> and then he was taking a bath and I was... Uh, trying to beat one of the bosses that I learned the pattern, the correct order from him that I should go in. And I couldn't beat the one that was before, so I just went to the, to the bathroom, uh, just knocked on the door and say, hey, hey, can I beat the next one without beating this one first? <laughs> like, Let me be, I'm taking a, I'm taking a bath. What do I want <laughs> to know? <laughs> I love awesome. that. That's full on like excited child energy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a great game, too. I remember, honestly, like, I'm pretty sure the reason I played that game, I think, was because, like, way back in the day when, like, Ego Raptor made his, like, sequelitis videos. I'm sure some of you have, have <laughs> yeah. seen those ones. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was so good. That's a great one. Excellent. Nice. You know, I don't know what it is, though. I tried playing Mega Man X recently, and, like, I think I just suck now, you know? Like, <laughs> back in the day, I could, like, I could play, like, those games. And, like, I remember beating, like, one of the newer Mega Mans, like, 9 or 10 or something on, like, the Xbox. And, like, it was hard. And, like, I beat it. I was like, yes. And then I played Mega Man X on my Switch. And I was like, no, this makes me very sad. <laughs> it's just, it's, those are hard games, man. Uh, I need to get older, that one, actually. Yeah. I'm getting I, older. Uh, I bounced off it, but I played the PSP version. So that's probably my own fault. Mm. <laughs> Well, anyone listening, play it. It got Dragon into gaming, so it has to be good. <laughs> it has to be speaking, good. Uh, speaking of Dragon. Uh, yeah. Why Dragon is the last question. Mm, yes. Why I'm Dragon? I'm going to steal your thunder, Alex. Alex. That's Segway. great. That was an excellent segue. <laughs> steal it away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, 
I got internet like when I was 12, 13, mm. more or less. And as many kids that first got into internet, I found those pages that you got flash games like Miniclip, uh, whatever. And one of them had a little section on the right that said top games. And I was like, ooh, what's a rose? First one was Runescape, Runescape, however you want to pronounce it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> like, oh, she Runescape like way in the day, like 15 years ago. Uh, so I said, hey, it's the best game in the site, let's go. And it prompted me to get a username. I have never won, I never had one before. So I was like, I saw the fire, the mythological, the all the medieval stuff. I was like, dragon's feet here. So, dragon. And uh, innocent child dragon was obviously taken. <laughs> of course. So, uh, I... There was a show with a couple of friends uh, in Spanish, H and 8. Well, in English, kind of, uh, kind of go well together. Like, it sounds funny for a young child, basically, to say together. So it's like, okay, H and 8. Oh. Uh, that was also taken. So it's uh, uh, here. <laughs> Dragon H, another number. And it's just, yeah, sure, that's fine. <laughs> and it went. And there you go. And the rest, as they say, is history, yeah. Isn't that just so classic? That's yeah. That sounds exactly like my Neopets adventure. That's just how it goes. <laughs> you know, I feel like that's a very Neopets. generational thing where it's just like we're stuck with the names that we thought were cool, aged eleven and twelve. Yep. Uh, yeah. In so many ways. <laughs> you know that actually. Sorry that that made me rem- reminded me. I, I I like did a film this year that used RuneScape, so I got to like make a character really? again and play it. Yeah. So RuneScape Classic is still going strong. Like the RuneScape you remember is still around. <laughs> And it's it's bad, yeah. but it's also great. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that it's yeah, free, really <laughs> right? Yeah, no, I mean, but the fact that it's free, it's like yeah. pretty amazing. Uh, I, I went down memory lane with that. I was just like, I realized though when I started playing it again for this like movie that we had to film, I didn't know what the hell I was doing when I played it as a kid. <laughs> like I was like, oh, this all makes actually makes sense. It's like has normal systems, but a child's like, I don't know how to craft (laughs) the story that blew my mind i don't know if you guys saw it when it was contemporary like when the lockdown was happening Mm -hmm. initially like march april may last year there were a load of a load of people in venezuela who who had the double whammy of being hit by all the problems of their economy before all of this kicked off there were people there just farming on runescape to make a living to eat in real life like that that was a legitimate thing what how crazy is that seriously yeah. that's yeah i didn't hear about that either that's nuts Convert... <laughs> sorry dragon you keep coming <laughs> I in there like... <laughs> I, I haven't heard that from runscape but i heard it from like wow mm. well i mean that's it, been a thing yeah. wow for like, ages oh, sorry go ahead yeah, yeah. Uh, both runescape and well are like the um top farming tools to make money um, at least that I heard of. That's the most depressing thing I think I've ever heard. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> truly, we live in a society. <laughs> I need to dust off my old account. Yeah, go go do some farming. Get the get the dollar dollar bills. <laughs> <laughs> get that bread. Yeah. Um, nice. Well, that was our little a little get to know you session. Hope we all got to know Dragon a little more. Um, mm-hmm. Why don't we move along then? Now you know everything about me. Yes, we know Except everything. Except the most important thing: oh. where do you stand on Syria and Palestine? Mm, yes. Oh no, talk. not this um. again. Right? <laughs> Wait, uh... Listen, it's still going on. It's an important question. <laughs> we'll maybe come back to it later. No, uh, I can tell you, uh, but I, I will tell you. But last time I gave my opinion on that, my lawyer told me to keep shut about that. So. <laughs> You have a player. I'm what impressed. Talking about ignore him. It's fine. <laughs> uh, well, why don't we move on to the even more controversial topic? What have you beaten recently, Dragon? Get out your oh, pitchforks. Yeah. <laughs> I will need to get my lawyer again for that one. <laughs> oh, um, <no>. <laughs> okay, uh, let's start with the Switch and let's move to PC. Uh, on Switch, I have recently beaten uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World with a friend. Uh, that we played online. A friend from Chile, actually, so a uh, of you, Paula. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, 
No, that was uh, I had never had the chance to play the original one. I didn't have a PS3 or an Xbox mm. 360. Was it on? Yeah, 360. Mm. That was it, right? Xbox Live yes, Arcade. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I never had a chance to play them, and I loved Scott Pilgrim, and everyone saying, hey, this is a good game, and my friend also didn't have them, and also was Scott Pilgrim fan, so hey, let's go. I actually have my Scott Pilgrim comics somewhere over there, but I don't want to go get them. <laughs> it's all right, they wouldn't translate to, to podcast anyway. <laughs> yeah. you good. They wouldn't. Um, how did you find but, it? Yeah, like, I basically a big... Up? Uh, it was alright. It was a. I haven't played a beat 'em up in a long time. I skipped the craze that. What was there was a beat 'em up uh, soon each. Uh, I mean recently that was kind of a rage. Uh, River Is it City River Girls? City Girls you're thinking of? Yeah. 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 Plus Streets of Rage Four one. came out recently too. Oh yeah. And Streets of Rage Four, yeah. And Bat New Battle. I, mean, never... I mean, there's tons of them. Yeah, but I have not played one in like. I think my last beat em up was uh, Double Dragon on the NES. Oh, shit. Damn. So... Oh, my God. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Do you, do you mean the family entertainment system? <laughs> yeah, the family entertainment system. On the and FES? The... That's good. <laughs> on the FES. <laughs> on the Persona 3. <laughs> wow, this has gone places. Yeah. Oh, I didn't mention Persona on the PlayStation 2 favorite games. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> you can't have it. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it was a it was a good game. It was clearly old. Like when you open up the Universal logo, is pixelated. Nice. Like I that could be a, a decision, but I don't think it was a decision. Damn. Really? I, well, I don't know. I think that might have been because that's the whole thing with Scott Pilgrim. Oh no, because <laughs> I think when they did the movie, didn't they pixelate the logos too? I think uh, they did. Maybe, Wait, but it wasn't movie? pixelated enough yeah, to Scott be the world to seem it was. Is there? I, a I love the movie too. Yeah, there's a movie. Wait, uh, is that called, a joke? Uh, it's called after the second volume. <laughs> oh, you didn't actually know? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's... Oh, okay, sorry. I thought you meant... <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no, it, there is a movie. It's 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 pretty good, actually. <laughs> I love the movie. Yeah. Um, nice. Okay. I, I put it on the background on Netflix sometimes. Nice. <laughs> Just to have something there. It has a young Captain <laughs> yeah. America. That's true. Is he in it? Yeah, he is. Plays with the first uh, evil yeah, ex-boyfriend. Yeah, the second evil ex. Or second. second oh, yeah. as if. Man, shows how much I remember about that film. He's got a freaking, uh, what is it? The the, the chin strap. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> the Chris strap. Yeah. What else yeah. have you been uh, playing, bud? So, I played the game that I only bought because of the name. But it's called 5D Chess with Multiverse Time Travel. Excuse mm-hmm. me, what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Excuse me, what? I love the name. <laughs> and, uh, I played a lot of chess when I was younger, so I know at least uh, basic strats. So I was like, oh, what is this? And um, it made no sense whatsoever. I finished all the puzzles in the game, all 49, I think. I still have no idea what was going on. <laughs> like, you move, and instead of moving a piece on your own, you can just... Uh, go to a previous place in in the game to put it actually like it's really weird to explain it's uh, do you know guys know the basic chess rules like how a knight works yeah yep like you move yep. two and one okay cool instead of moving uh, two and one you can also move uh, two steps backwards in time and one to the left or one to the right oh so it's like add, add dimensions it's not only column and and row uh, time is also a, uh, a dimension. Right. Oh, you can move your, right. your pieces. Because isn't 4D chess where you have like multiple boards like stacked on each other and you can like go up and down the boards? Like, because I remember. Uh, is that 4D or 3D? I don't know. It might be 3D really chess. I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't remember. It's um, not like 3D chess. Yeah, that might be 3D chess. Yeah, 5Gs. Okay, I remember looking this up on Steam because I was curious. I was like, maybe I'll try playing some of the games that Trey could play. And I saw this one and I went, I love chess, but I'm not touching this bad boy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it, it makes for, no for sense. For who's listening, it's described on the Steam page as the first ever chess variant with spatial, temporal, and parallel dimensions. <laughs> I just don't want to fuck with that. Oh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't say about the parallel dimensions. Because when you travel to the past, you make a branch in timeline. Oh, and that's God. another dimension you can move through. Oh, so Jesus your Christ. light can go two times to the past and one to a parallel dimension. 
and stay in the same place in the in the void. It makes oh. no sense. And Fuck. the worst part of the game, it, it's horrible. I loved it, but it's horrible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the worst part of the game is that sometimes you get in check, and you can. There's a way you can get out of, but the game doesn't tell you how. Mm. And I just didn't know how to just quit. Like I forfeit. I don't know how to escape this. This freaking bishop checking me from two timelines down. Oh my god. That is checking three of my kings at the same time. Wow, this <laughs> I feel like this is probably a game that someone is like crazy good at. You know, like there's someone out there who can like do the probably. craziest shit with this game. Um and then everyone else is just like, what's happening? <laughs> yeah, yeah literally the dragon one, strat. Uh, I beat it. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> Yeah, basically. There's actually uh, one review on the Steam page that was also the reason why I bought it. It's still like, in normal days, I don't know what, they, uh, what I'm doing. So I love this game because here nobody knows what they are doing. <laughs> Damn nice. it. All right. <laughs> Hit us with the next one. So my next game, yeah, it's Shantae Half Shin Hero, Ooh. which is not the last one, the previous one. And I'm... Playing Shantai games in reverse order for some reason. I played in, in 2020 the the last one, Seven Sirens. Hmm. I think it was. Uh, I, so. I liked it a lot. So and I got this one gifted for uh, for Christmas from another friend. So I was like, sure, let's get some Shantai action. It was uh, worse than the last one, but oh. it was cool. It was alright because the the last one is was more Metroidvania y, gotcha. as Shantai tends to be. But Half Shin Hero is not. Uh, it has stages, and you have to go back to the stages. But it's just like go from left to right the stage. Gotcha. <laughs> Sounds a little. And you can access some passages, but uh, it's it's not really a, a interconnected map like gotcha. a big Metroidvania that I love oh so much. Hmm. I've always meant to look into the Shantae series. Like I know the Game Boy Color game is apparently very fun, um, and sort of kicked it off. Um, but yeah, never got into it. It's one of those series, you know, that like you see it and you're always like, yes, I heard that's good. <laughs> I just never ended up touching it. Yeah. <laughs> I was you last year. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> What's this? But actually this game has, uh, some also, I only play the, the main campaign. It has apparently like eight secondary campaigns that you can go through that I don't know what they are. Like you play as other characters in some other scenarios. Mm. I don't know what it is. I will play them eventually. I'm sure they are fine <laughs> and fun. Nice. I'm very curious about this next game. What What is this? Oh, I played that. Frambo. Oh. Frambo is the one I will uh, recommend the most out of my list of beaten games, actually. Mm. It's, a, let's say, a point-and-click adventure game. Mm -hmm. But the main, the main draw of the game is that you play as this little girl, and it's like a really somber, uh, creepy uh, atmosphere. You start like in a, uh, it's, it's not an orphanage, it's like an asylum, a, a mental hospital for kids, for children. Mm -hmm. And you are admitted there and you have to escape because you want to find your cat and stuff. And there are monsters. And the main, the also the, the thing that makes this game special is that there's a little button on the, on the bottom right that you can take pills, that's your medication. And that uh, basically transports you into a parallel dimension that it's, Everything's messed up. Everyone's dead. Uh, stuff are poured up. There are monsters everywhere. So you have to traverse between the both dimensions to keep moving forward. You're very, it very American, McGee. Oh. It has. It also has a lot of parallels with. I don't know what American Maggie is, to be honest. Uh, Alice yeah. Madness Returns. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. It actually has a lot of parallels with Alice in Wonderland. Hmm. In general. And you said you played hmm. this too, Paula? Oh, yeah. I think I played it. I think it was like a couple of years ago, if I remember correctly. And it was really creepy, but really fun. And that time a little bit scary. Ooh. Because, like, it can be scary. It can be scary because, like, uh, uh, as Charles said, like, the pills let you see things that you are, I suppose, not supposed to see. Gotcha. Yeah, like, not spoiling much, but it's it's not a normal to just uh, go to the other dimension and there's a child being eaten by worms. 
Oh, yes. This it's fun. Like yeah. It's up my alley. So, <laughs> <laughs> it is um, for the week of <laughs> It can also be weirdly cute at some moments. Like, there's some wholesome moments in there, too. Yeah. Like, because yeah. Fran, the protagonist, is is simply adorable. Hmm. And she's extremely smart. She's, like, 10 years old, I think. 9 years old, 10 years old, something like that. Too young, basically, for what's going yeah. on in those screenshots. Too young. Hmm. God damn. Yeah. Okay, and how do you... Mm, then... Oh, sorry, yeah. Uh, the thing about Fran is, like, being a kid, she affronts things like a kid so you have this thing that would probably like send an adult into like where the hell am I like in a fit of okay I don't know where I uh, creatures are weird and I'm panicking and she's a kid so she's like more open I guess to things that don't seem to make any sense ah gotcha she's like hello monster could you let me pass please Mm. <laughs> Pretty much. She's got an imagination that's very open. <laughs> yeah, basically. Cool. And what is what is what's okay? What is this next one? I don't know how to pronounce. There's just a symbol. <laughs> it's it's a symbol. That is the, symbol. It's a cat face. Oh. It's a cat face. Actually, uh, this game got recommended uh, on the Discord of HLTV by Dune, I think. By Nice. Dune guy now. Well, let's talk about Dune. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's weird. I beat it in about an hour. He took uh, forty minutes. He said, mm -hmm. but it's it, you're a cat that you want to explore some islands. You go swim between them. Hmm. Uh, it's very very pixelated art. It's it's kind of cute. Sure this one, yeah. Yeah, I'd love um, to be able to find it because that search is turning nothing up on Steam. Search the symbol <laughs> with the game on like Google, and it'll pop up. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll do. It's Sorry, crack on dragon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's free, basically, so you can download um, it if you want. Um, I think I might. It got pretty frustrating in a moment because uh, there's no guide. You just move. Uh, arrow keys is the only controls, and you don't know where to go. I didn't know if it had an ending at one point. I was like, I explored everywhere. I don't know what to do. <laughs> but then I found one little island that they hadn't gone to, and then I went through all the rest of the game. I see. Like, 40 minutes was being lost. The last 20 minutes was actually getting through the game. <clears throat> oh, jeez. But it has a cute cat. <laughs> it has a cute cat. This would be, or maybe I'm crazy, but I think I saw it, like, at last year, like, was it a wholesome direct? With, like, really wholesome kitsy games? Maybe. I have no idea. <laughs> Let's say yes. <laughs> yeah, sure, I remember. I have willed it into existence. Solid Navy. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I found it. So they they've got it called Meow mm -hmm. on on it. Okay. Which is slightly more convenient what, than whatever that symbol was. Um, they are. Face might, the game. Might talk more about that in a couple of weeks. We shall see. <laughs> um, nice. Well, then I think... hopefully you will get less lost. Hmm. I think that brings us to our last game that we beat, which we all actually beat together. Uh, yes. Monster Woo! Prom. <laughs> Alex, how does it feel to actually know what's going on for this one? It's great. <laughs> I've seen, it's pretty great. You know, it's really funny. I was saying this to you guys in the, but um, action button review. So like, um, uh, oh no. What is his name? No. T t uh, he does the, those crazy, he got kind of like big for doing, um, the Dragon Quest Eleven review for Kotaku. Um, he does like these really long reviews. Um, and anyway, he did this thing for Action Button uh, Reviews is this thing online. And he does these huge long um, reviews of games. Like, I mean, hours long, like three hours. Is this the guy who did that six hour long yes. review of like the two hour visual novel? Yeah, yeah right. Tim I know, Rogers. I know the one you mean if I don't know the name. Tim oh, Rogers, go, go that's his name. Yes, so there's this, uh, there's this um, dating sim that kind of, created the genre really um in japan and it's never released outside of japan and it's called tokimeki memorial um and when we played monster problem i was like this is this is tokimeki memorial with monsters like it's really just like that evolution of it and like i have to say that game's dope i actually bought the bundle afterwards because i want to play some with my friends too and i want to play oh, that shit. camp one yeah <laughs> 
Nice. But I didn't get a date, and I was sad. <laughs> <laughs> it's more normal than you'd think. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Dragon, you were the it only happens. successful one. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Dragon's the MVP. Date, Dragon I... like picks a focus and just does it. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, it works most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> but yeah, it was it was actually pretty fun. Uh, it's it's always a blast to play with someone that hasn't played it before because you see the the first reactions because there are some events that you get every time like the description of the places that you go to increase stats. Yes, and it, it's it's really fun to actually see someone react again. It's like it, it infuses life into the game. Nice. Yes. Um, that was really like three or four weeks ago, and now I got to see someone new playing the game. <laughs> Mm. So I can agree. Ooh. Yeah, it, you know it's yeah. nice too because now I understand when people say the woes of the shop. Like, god damn it, I gotta learn better than to pick that stupid shop every time. Don't buy items; it doesn't work. <laughs> and we I'm had a horrid run when we played as well. I think in that one playthrough we did as the four of us, I think we hit more accidental shops <laughs> than we've hit in every other game I've played combined. <laughs> And, and to be fair, most of them were me. <laughs> <laughs> I think you and I did it the same amount of times, though. We did it like two or three times to get that fucking shop. And I was like, no! I was clicking the wrong yeah. thing all game. Because that, that event right at the end, I, I clicked the wrong character choice in the canteen. And I just couldn't tell you why. I just had a moment of madness. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's because one time, going one time to the shop, it's all right. You can get something good. It works. Going two or more times, you just get screwed. You don't get enough points with mm-hmm. whatever monster you're going for. Yeah. It's uh, extremely difficult. I was super impressed by the game's writing. Like, I mean, it's it's genuinely funny. Like, yeah. um, and, and in such a way that, like, it's kind of nice because, like, it's sort of, it, it feels a little bit like it's taking the piss out of, like, dating sims, but, like, also really respecting them, which is, like, kind of a fun combination yeah. of it, you know? Like, um, where it's like sort of joking around like, yeah, we know this is kind of silly, but it's also so much fun. Play with your friends, you know? And I'm like, I dig that. I dig that. It felt weirdly wholesome, you know? It's you the know? thing that the writing makes that game. Yeah. Like there's a bit, I can't remember if it was the playthrough you did with us or not, Alex. There's a there's a scene where um, Liam's taking the piss out of Kickstarters. <laughs> and and for anyone who doesn't know, this game was born out of a Kickstarter. And, and the... <laughs> There's like a, a square brackets comment after he rips into them saying, Jesus Christ, Liam, shut the fuck up. Do you not know where you came from? <laughs> <laughs> and the, 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 the writing just nails tone everywhere. I can't think of a line that fell flat yet, no. which, which is truly exceptional when you think of how many lines they had to write for a, a, a game with that many choices and events and, and everything else. Yeah. Plus, I guess it's yeah. only bigger. Uh, uh, even, uh, oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, and the yeah. DLC as well, because there's, there's a DLC for the first one with two extra characters, which obviously is a whole other set of dialogue. I got that one. That's yeah. the one I got. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I want them all now. <laughs> next time. I was going to say, I know he's hosting the next one. Next time we'll play with one. your copy. Yeah. yeah, we'll play with mine next time. <laughs> yes. Oh, God. Yes. I got the sequel, too. You can learn the new stuff. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Man. Juan Maybe. Juan Magical Latino got is in the sequel, so. Oh, is it? Of course he is. Oh. It wouldn't be right if he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's a bartender or something. I saw it in the screenshots. Yeah, I I think, nah. needless to say, we can highly recommend um, that people play this together. This should be like the, you know, the guest ritual for how long to be <laughs> played. Oh, no. I was actually <laughs> thinking that last night. I was thinking we should just get every guest on to play like an icebreaker monster prop. Right. It's pretty great. There you go. Yeah. That's the... That's one of your requirements going forward. If you're listening and you want to take part, you have to want to play Monster Prom. And if you don't, we don't want you. <laughs> Ooh, I don't trust guys. anyone who doesn't want to go to prom with a monster. I just don't. <laughs> <laughs> but that is probably a good springboard. Give uh, give Dragon a, a bit of a, a rest on the old vocal cords. Shall we all collectively talk about what we've been playing? And Alex, do you want to keep the, the proverbial... Um, conch and, and crack on with what you've been playing this week. Sure, I will blow that conch. Um, so <laughs> that yes, sounds you so bad. All right, I haven't been playing much. Uh, move on, move on. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the edit there, right? Um, I'm just gonna like, leave it there. Yeah, just, but... just leave this. Just... <laughs> just, just sit in it for a moment, Alex. Let it let it percolate. <laughs> um, so I, I'm still playing Immortals: Phoenix Rising. Um, it's fine. 
I don't know. I don't think I'm going to beat this game. I like this game. I don't think I'm going to beat it because it's like a big expansive game and I don't really see why I need to. Like, I'm just sort of getting what I want from it right now, um, which is just mm. kind of a fun Assassin's Creed-ish, Breath of the Wild-ish thing. Um, I also started playing Professor Layton in the Unwound Future, which I think goes by many different names in many different lands. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, it's the lost future, I think. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. In some countries. Okay. So yeah, it's the including mine. Yeah. Including okay. It's the the last one in the You know, I will say right now, I'm I'm not enjoying it as much as the others. The story is the best by far so far. Like it's the most interesting. I've been encountering more and more like that was bullshit puzzles. Um like just you know, like there was a couple, like there's one where it asked me to like find something in a picture, and the thing you had to find was that a guy was holding his cards with <laughs> some of the numbers hidden but like that's only true in certain countries necessarily and like it was such a weird thing it was just it was dumb it was like a question where like when you solve it you're like that wasn't a fun puzzle that was a dumb <laughs> puzzle you know and like there's like there's been a couple like that where when i solved it i was like Duh was just dumb um so anyway that's been a little disappointing but i sort of i assumed this was gonna happen i was like you gotta hit a point man where the game maker is just like there's only so many puzzles in the world (laughs) yeah he's like i have to make hundreds um anyway like what seven uh professor layton games i know it's crazy but i i really want to beat this one so i can get to professor layton versus phoenix Wright. that's that's the real game i want to play um, best um, best professor laid on game. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> uh, anyway, that's me, Rick. Why, why don't you? What were you? What are you doing? Oh damn, that was that was much quicker than I expected. Well, I said uh, I didn't yeah, have sure, much. <laughs> I, I I remembered that, but I hadn't computed it basically. <laughs> so I've uh, I've got four games. Two that I've got very little to say about. And two I've got a fair bit to say about. So the little ones first. I've played more of Xeno Crisis on the Vita. It's still fantastic. It's still whipping my ass. Um, I, I legitimately am not sure if I'll beat it even on easy. It is uh, the best kind of difficult. The kind of difficult where as soon as you die, you're like, fuck, let's go again. So that's great. Can still massively recommend it on any of like the 53 platforms it's on. You're bound to own one of them. Um, and then I've just started playing Azure Striker Gunvolt on the 3DS. So it's like a, a Mega Man style game. It's got a slightly unique conceit where the shots don't damage the enemy. It's like taser shots. So they prime the enemy to be hit by your energy when you activate it. But that consumes MP. And it's clear that it's designed to be exploited and, and worked with in speed run. I don't have that kind of understanding of the mechanics or the skill to do it yet. But I'm still having quite a good time regardless. But it's very... Very early doors, so that could go either way for me. Um, and then I've just been I've been sinking my teeth into two big boy games. The first one is Hades, which I think you're way off base, Alex. I think it's incredible. I don't know. It's I don't think it's a bad game. I think it gets boring. But anyway, keep going. Wow. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. So far, I'm quite a few runs in, and mm-hmm. I am having an excellent time with it. Mm-hmm. I think I mentioned it when I when I played one run last week. The moment to moment is Chef Kiss. It's really, really tightly strung and well put together. I haven't seen enough of the writing to say yet, but Supergiant have got pedigree for it, and everyone seems to love that aspect of it as well. So I'm cautiously optimistic about that side of things. Mm. I'm just impressed by how many different options are thrown at you in terms of the boons that pop up in game, in terms of all the different weapon choices how much they change things. So I've, I've only actually done runs with the, the starting sword and with the bow and arrow so far, but they just both feel like completely different systems because of the way they build in. You approach the game entirely differently. There's a, an incredible amount of flexibility in the way that those scenarios are thrown at you in game that makes those encounters still feel balanced when you're doing those things it's not like one feels broken or one just feels unworkable they feel viable while being very different and we'll see maybe maybe in two or three weeks i'm the same as you it's just like oh i've I've done with it now it's but i as it stands don't think that's going to be the case 
And that's also not the case, despite all the problems it's had in the press with the last game that I'm playing at the moment, <laughs> which is Cyberpunk. I had 20 plus hours of my weekend disappear playing this Damn. game. It's I've I've fallen deep. And while we can all probably agree it should have spent another six months in the oven and there would have been far fewer things for people to complain about. And while we can agree that there's a lot of bollocks in and around the creation of that game, I am firmly of the belief that the game itself, even, you know, warts and all, is wonderful in terms of the flexibility those systems give you, in terms of the world they've built. What a lot of people seem to forget is that kind of big, massive open world thing isn't normally as, as dense and as high as it is there. Even Grand Theft Auto, so much of its open planes and like flat pack, yeah. not, not that dissimilar from like a fallout wasteland. This is a really dense open world with loads of verticality, with lots of things built into it and through it. It's well written. I'm very excited to go back to The Witcher 3 because people are saying that was better written than this. And the writing the writing's been really impressive in Cyberpunk for me so far. Um, I'm about 45 hours in. Not even halfway through the story, I don't think. Hmm. I've just been hammering all of the... There's so much content in the game. And it's good content. It's not like, climb this tower, now kill 10 of these enemies. Like, <laughs> there is a little bit of open world guff, but it's signposted very differently. And there's not really any reason to do it unless you really want to do it or you're grinding for money or whatever. Whereas the stuff where there's proper writing and there's stuff built through into it is clearly signposted that way and is incredibly rewarding in terms of the scenarios it puts you in, the questions it asks you to answer, the problems it gives you to solve in terms of approach. Um, like the, the mission I just did just before we started – um, a fixer calls you. They've got a, a client who sends drones into Night City with drugs. And someone's been intercepting these drones. Now, what you could do if you put two and two together and say, well, Dully, there's a, a giant tower here. They're probably fucking with the signal. There's a very obvious box near the top of it that you could probably just snipe from distance. And that, that would be enough to end the mission. Having completed it, you can see that that's that's something you can do in hindsight. So if, if you thought about it, you could complete that mission without ever entering the building. Uh, you can sneak into the building. There's a file on the computer that, um, that talks about the virus that they procured that they're now broadcasting over these waves. And you can hack through and do it that way. Or, and this is what I did, there's a turret at the front entrance, which you can deactivate, take off of its ramp, and just pulverize the 20 enemies or so in that building, work your way up to the top and then Johnny will tell you a little bit about like when they were broadcasting pirate signals on towers like this in the 2020s. Uh, and the interesting thing is if you do it that way, someone calls for reinforcements. And I had a couple of vehicles drive in as I was deactivating the tower that I then had to snipe from <laughs> off the tower. But that's just like a random piece of side content that's got three completely different and completely viable approaches, broad brush. Mm. Well, you're and making me excited Ender. to play it later this year when they release the season. <laughs> when they fix it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Well, I mean, the, the irony is, having gone on about I haven't had any, any crashes since 1.04, uh, this 1.11, I've had two crashes. But in the game's defense, both of those were after seven hours of continuous play. Okay. Which, yes, it still shouldn't be crashing. But if it was ever going to crash, that's an acceptable time to do it. And as I've said before, the autosave is super aggressive. Hmm. So I've, I've never lost any progress, certainly not any meaningful progress. Hmm. It's, I, I could do a whole podcast episode just talking about how much I love this game. <laughs> and I was always primed to, but it is as it stands and, and presuming it doesn't fuck up anywhere massively, it's a 10 for me. It really, really has lived up to what I wanted from it. Well, one day we will do that podcast. <laughs> when well, I yes, one day. by hook or by crook, I will do that. Yeah. Podcast. <laughs> um, but for this podcast, uh, Paolo, why don't you tell us what you've been playing this week before we return to the guest of honor? A 
Okay, so um, I didn't beat anything this week. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's awesome. because my attention was spread like too thin among <laughs> multiple games. <laughs> so I'm still playing God Realized, and I'm going to correct myself here because I've been calling it Chijiro uh, Ganai no Kiseki and it's Hakogin no Kiseki. Um, so my mistake there. Uh, That's why I didn't know which game it was. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, for those who uh, are um, listening to us, uh, sorry, for those who are listening to us for the first time, uh, Cut Realize Hakugi no Kiseki is pretty much the Japanese version of Cut Realize Winter Time Miracles. That is getting a English Switch release. Um, later this month, and it is the second fan disc or like a sequel with fan material uh, f- with a material for the fans um, in the Code Real Life series. Um, so yeah, I've been playing a little bit of that, uh, but I've been making like a lot more progress in the other games. And those are Fire Emblem, Child of Dragon, and the Blade of Light. And currently on chapter 20, and I think there are like 25 chapters in the game. Damn. So I should be, uh, I should be able to beat it uh, for the next session. Well, that's perfect, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I, I ran into a little bit of a wall because like sometimes the difficulty is spikes in a very stupid way. As in, I was like mowing down uh, all the enemies in one chapter, and the uh, and the following chapter, uh, the bulkier enemies are immune to magic, and my biggest damage dealers are um, sorcerers or um, I forgot the name of the unit, but it's pretty much like uh, the the magic user of this game. Well, you couldn't expect Nintendo to balance it. They've only had, what, 35 years? <laughs> <laughs> but, oh my god. I mean, yeah, it's an old game, so I guess it is, like, it, it comes with the with the fact that it is, like, an old game. It, 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 it wasn't, like, unbeatable. That's true. But I had to, like, um, rethink my whole strategy, and I think I have a couple of items that I should really start using. But... Uh, the combo system in this game is that um, in the newer Fire Emblem games, you can like set up your items for per party member, like before entering into battle, right? In this one, you have to be like in the battle, and there is like this little tent where you have to bring your unit you want to uh, modify it, the inventory oh, for. Oh no! So. <laughs> On that's the flip disgusting. side, you don't have like a turn, um, what's his name, a turn limit. So, uh, well, that's good. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, I hate that. Yeah, I, I mean, it isn't as terrible as it sounds because you don't really run out of um, items. Okay. Uh, like really fast for your units. And there's also like always these little chops and you can like directly like by the equipment with the unit you are like in the equipment for. But sometimes when you have like this item that you picked up and your inventory is full and it is sent to the convoy and you don't know which unit it will work on, you either have to Google it or just pass it around be- between your army. It's, yeah, yeah, it's one thing with the internet. Sometimes. Imagine playing that back in the day. That would be I mean, horrible. The- Gotta talk on the schoolyard. <laughs> At the very least, uh, you can still like trade between your units. So, uh, if if your archer just picks a silver a silver sword, you can just uh, give it to your uh, sword user that is like nearby. Hopefully, I was going to say, do they do what they make you do in the GBA one, where they have to be stood next to each other to trade? Yeah. Uh, uh. That's for every Fire Emblem, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure in all of them you have to be next to... I know, yeah. It's like, it's annoying, but you're like, you can't throw it. (laughs) 
You can throw it. No, safely. Anyway. I mean, you're not gonna throw the sword to the guy you're giving the sword to. That would be great, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a like, catch. <laughs> I got it. I oh, got it. Kill your yeah. units. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh dear. So yeah, uh, that's for Fire Emblem. Mm. Um, I'm still playing Hakuoki, and the last episode, I was like, um, not very happy with the next character I was uh, going for, like in the game. But it's kind of like. Um, I don't know how the phrase is, but it's like when you're little, you're like a big fan of Batman, but when you grow up, uh, the Joker makes more sense. Okay, gotcha. I kind of have like a moment of that yeah. with this game, so I was like, okay. <laughs> but in the sense Keep like... Going now. <laughs> in the sense like that, um, when I originally played it, I emphasized like a zero or minus infinite with this character but like with this replay i was like okay i get where you're coming from and it actually makes a lot of sense but your actions are still like huh. but it's still like you can see that it makes sense under the context of what this character is going through and it is a uh, hakuoki takes place during a war so Gotcha. You can't ask for morals in a war, really. <laughs> the Geneva Convention uh... would beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> this was way in the past, and there's demons, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. There's no war the, crimes. It's like, I still tend to forget because I like the. I hope I don't butcher this, but if I remember correctly, the question where it was in like sometime in. 1800 I don't remember the exact year but it's like um at that point in time um in many countries they had like cars and like more modern um staff structures and ways to like make medicine or weaponry or stuff like that and it really um it really makes you feel how Japan was like stuck in this bubble in times uh, at that time, because everything was still like very traditional. And mm. one thing I can give Hakuoki is like, uh, one, it makes you feel like the um, ambience of the era. It gives you like a really good outlook of some of the information or like lines of thought of that time hmm. but it also like even if it's probably at a lesser degree i think uh it makes you feel like how uh, how at, the, at that uh, at some point in time for the Togonet and for the Chinsengumi, the, the war start going south really quick and I feel like it captures really well, like that feeling of despair, but willing to fight until the end kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't know, I got like this uh, weird love hate relationship uh, with this game <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. I think I'm going to save like the Hakuraki discussion like for next episode because this could end up like. <laughs> Pretty long because all the things I've been. Uh, the Cyberpunk and Hakuoki episode. <laughs> uh, uh. This is where Paula gets her own Hakuoki podcast. There you go. Next week. Before oh, we I... let you move on, though, I, I have to just question the distinct lack of 13 Sentinels Igis Rim on this playing <laughs> list. Well, let's just say I wasn't in the same place as my PS4 was for like. Most of the week. Uh, so, Dragon, are you good for the same time next week, yeah? <laughs> 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 I kid, I kid. Crack on. So, what else are you <laughs> playing, girl? I see one of them here. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Terror Start. And let me grab my notes real quick. Because um, I actually make good progress on this game. Oh. Um, mm. 
On this game. Mm. <laughs> mm. I don't get it. <coughs> He's just more razzing on 13 Sentinels, but keep going, Paul. <laughs> Ignore me. I'm just hazing. <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, on the Skyward Sword, I... I'm trying to see where the hell am I. Okay, I went to, like, the last time I played, I was, like, at the second trial where you have to collect, like, tears of light. And I was like, okay, I'm out for the timing. But now I just went through my favorite dungeon. That is the Sanchi. So one of the Skyward Sword's mechanics is that there's these stones that if you hit them, they will affect time around them. So you have this desert area that used to be a sea. So you you have this little boat and you uh, hit the stone on the boat. And now you're sailing in the waters in the middle of the desert and it is glorious. And um, the sun ship is pretty much like, well, the chip in this sea of sand. And it is by far uh, one of my favorite, if not my favorite dungeon, at least in the 3D Zelda games, because of how it takes this thing you came to to know and know how to work with, that are the time chip stones. And it flips the, the, the concept a little bit on its head. And it makes you really think how Every little thing you do affects the the chip not only like in the present but also in the past. And it is my favorite uh, dungeon, but it has the stupidest looking boss. <laughs> 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 ah. And that's where I'm gonna leave it. Uh, yeah. So I finished. Don't remember that. the boss. Um, I blocked Skyward Sword out of my memory, but anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, it it is. It is a pretty good game. Uh, like, you know, I know people have like problems with the motion controls, but I haven't. It's like Rick's um, situation with the PS4 version of Cyberpunk in a way. Yeah. That wasn't my issue. It's, just... it's broken, but it's your broken. Yeah, there you go. I think my my <laughs> thing is like Skyward Sword. It's like Zelda games are always for me kind of like the next genre defining sort of like version of that type of game you know like they're always like the best of it and skyward sword only felt like it was great you know like it was it was good it's just that it didn't like seem to hold up to even games that i could play at the same time you know that was my issue but that's a whole other thing i'm glad you're liking it (laughs) it might be because like from that era i didn't get to play many games plus i'm sure now it's just a good game (laughs) it's it's still a good game like um i get that people say that it's linear but i don't find it like too linear at some point. And this is yet you can still like do a lot of stuff between them just anyway. <laughs> uh so I kept progressing a little bit more until I got the uh song Dean's Power of the from the um, Isle of Songs. Mm-hmm. And then I realized I had to go through another trial. So I was like, nope, see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um so moving on. Uh, Genshin Impact. I finally pulled the trigger. I'm finally playing because I, my boyfriend has been playing it for a while and he sometimes streams it uh, via Discord to me. And I started to get really tempted, especially when we were talking about like the voice actors in the game. And me being like an a visual novel fan, I start recognizing, and, and also an anime fan, I start recognizing a lot of the um Japanese voice actors on the game so mm-hmm. I was like hmm let's investigate a little bit more that, about that game and suddenly I was playing and I was in Gacha Hill um <laughs> and I've been in Gacha Hill ever since ever since I think it was Friday when I started playing the Gacha isn't that bad though the Gacha is barely uh, the there it isn't that bad, but it's just like that little extra motivation to check in like every day. Because you can get like that one character you want. And at this point, I'm just like here for the ride. Still, like this game is like at a weird spot for me because in the exp- exploration wise, it's a little bit like Breath of the Wild, but also 
it has the issue that you don't have like a way to travel faster in the sense of you you can teleport or you can walk but you don't have like stuff in breath of the wild that's like the the horses or chill surfing or you just can't uh, there's no middle ground there is no middle ground that's the thing yeah. and also like it feels like it is lacking on some like bigger animals uh that is like very empty and you have the i guess it is a slime that follows you around sometimes like it goes like underground and it throws something at you and then it goes away and it's like the hell was that but sometimes it feels like a little bit barren uh in that sense when it yeah. is not barren it is a lot of fun but but I kind of wish that the enemies in the lower level areas kind of scale with you a little bit. I guess it's more like mm -hmm. a Xenoblade uh, case that in Xenoblade you have like uh, different level enemies in different areas. Mm. But unlike Xenoblade, you can't just waltz everywhere as you like because the game has been like receiving patches and receiving more of the story and it's going to be like this for the following two years. And also you need like a certain adventure rank to get to other places. And that is like a little bit of a bummer because I like exploring. I like making mistakes and getting killed for it because that's how I learn to play games. Uh, yeah. It was yeah, interesting when... Oh, sorry, go on. It's all right. Uh, another little comparison with Xenoblade is that uh, how you make like these combos with different uh, element characters um, because uh, the combat is super easy to to do. It's a little bit harder to master, not at the extent of Xenoblade is. And I played Xenoblade 2 and that combat is crazy. Uh, but uh, here you have like your various elementals, but uh, instead of having like weaknesses, they cause reactions. And that is one thing I really like about the game. Because like, um, instead of, oh, that's a fire character, I'm gonna pour water on it and call it a day. No, 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 no. Uh, you have the option of making it explode with electricity, or you can also like do weird combos and freeze it or uh, use wind to crowd control enemies and stuff like that. So, mm. It still feels a little bit more shallow compared to other stuff I play in terms of combat. But I even that it is a free game, it's like, yeah, I'm not even it, it, it's definitely good for free. I think it goes back to what you said about linearity, though, because for all the looking like and, and sounding like and quacking like a, a, a Breath of the Wild, the, the way the story structured it is very linear. And it, there is a bit of a. Um, a disconnect between those two. I've noticed myself not particularly wanting to go back to it, so it'll be interesting to see if you stick with it over the coming weeks. Because I, as much as I enjoyed it, and as much as I'm thinking I should probably go back and play that, I haven't felt any compulsion in the way that I have with a Hades or a Cyberpunk or a crafted experience, for example. So I don't know if you'll feel the same way. Um, yeah. It's, have you got anything else, or...? Yeah, I think I am going to save the the other games for next week. So, Dragon, how, what have you been playing here? Oh, yeah. Uh, apart from what I've been, uh, I will just go over It's only two games. I play a lot of Smash Bros. Ultimate. I have been playing since the game released. I have been playing continuously. I have like 700 hours on the game. On my <laughs> copy, I have uh, many more on other people's game. I love the game. I have played it to death. Damn. And I will keep doing it. So... <laughs> Yeah, uh, Are you like I'm playing a, a lot of online. This point? <laughs> uh, uh, I'm trying. There's a, a system where you get elite, uh, like elite status with different characters. There are eighty something, eighty three characters in the game. I have elite in forty nine of them, so I'm doing good. Yeah, you're oh doing good. God. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> God damn. So yeah, I'm doing good. I like that game. And the other game I've been playing that is more uh, single-player stuff is The Warlock of Firetop Mountain. It's a game that's basically a tabletop RPG. Uh, it's based on a, an actual uh, adventure book that you can yeah, play Yeah, it's the fighting yourself. fantasy one, isn't it? 
I exactly. read the shit out of that book as a kid. <laughs> oh man, well, the amount a, of pieces of paper I version. went through your mind little character sheets. Ooh. I actually I bought this game for real yeah. cheap on Switch, so I'm interested to hear what you think about it. I, I'm liking it. Uh the thing is, I have never beaten it yet. I have done like four runs with different characters. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, this it changes every time what each character does and can do, but the places you travel through are the same. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I know, like, oh, in this labyrinth I just go left and <laughs> straight, straight right, if I want the optimal path with the least encounters. Which but, you do. Uh, yeah, when I want to beat it, yes. But when I want to explore the character and what they do with certain rooms. For example, I'm playing the the guy, the, the the monk that wants to scourge the place for all evil, and I know there is a giant uh, group of corpses over there. Yeah, I will go to see what he does, like that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it can get repetitive because you know what's go, what's going to happen and what's the next place you will see. But uh, the game is fun. I have played for four hours, I think, so far, and I did four rounds or so. I don't actually remember the numbers, but. It's good. I want to beat it someday. I think I got pretty close last run with a guy that was illiterate and I couldn't read, but it wasn't a problem because I knew what everything said. <laughs> nice. Nice. Oh, dear. Um, with that, should we move on to the topic slash question that Dragon himself yes. brought to us? So, Dragon, take it away. What's your question for oh, us? Oh, yeah. My question for all of you is, what is a good game or game characteristic to ease someone into the world of gaming? Mm. So, basically, uh, what this question came from is that uh, I've had uh, some friends and close people to me, family members, that were not at all into gaming, and I wanted to share with them this part of me that is uh, really important to me. Basically, I spent all my free time basically playing games. So I wanted others to know about the world. So I've had some successes and some failures on introducing them to the games, and I want to know what all of you think about it. Ooh, can you tell us really quickly about those successes and failures just to frame the conversation? Uh, yeah, sure. For example, uh, some friends that haven't played games. I had a friend on, on the last place I worked at that we played games during, during lunch on, on a Wii system that we had laying around. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I introduced him. He didn't play games, so we just say, hey, let's all play Mario Kart together. Hmm. And it was like, it was the Wii, we have the, 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 the Wii mode that you can just control as, as a wheel. And I was like, yeah, they get it immediately, they just have to press the two button, go. And Everyone loves we America. say like, okay, the first, the first run, let's not use that many items on them, let's just let them figure it out. And then we keep progressing and they like the game. And then we move out to the harder stuff. Uh, sometimes it just doesn't work because people don't like the games themselves. <laughs> hmm. It's um I think we should probably try and think of people around our age group. The only reason I say this is uh my notable failure in this area. Uh me and my brother tried to get my dad playing The Hobbit on the PS2, which to be fair is generally a pretty good game just to give someone because it starts off quite sedate you're wandering around the shire and then you slowly pick up a staff and start like doing things. The problem we had with my dad is he was used to like the Sinclair style of the Hobbit, where you typed "get in barrel" or you yeah. know, like. Oh yeah. He had to stop every time he needed to move the camera. He couldn't get his brain to to understand moving two sticks at the same time. Um, so I think that's probably not a problem you have if you get someone who's in our our age bracket, sort of late teens, early twenties, yeah. mid to late twenties, who can who can get their brain into that frame of mind but i think um, it depends yeah paula i was gonna say yeah there you both go uh have you have any of you watch um what's the name of the channel resvid and i think Resvud? it was yeah he's been doing this with his girl i'm actually doing the same thing as he yeah. was when he started talking about that i was like that's what i've been doing like he's introducing his girlfriend to <laughs> to gaming and my partner is in the same boat where she Oh man, when she has to, so it's interesting. She's pretty good at some games, right? Growing up, she did play a little bit of like 2D Mario. That was like a thing that was played with her, with her sisters and stuff. But the actual conception of moving a camera at the same time, like once in a while, I'll be playing. She likes to watch me play games. And uh, we were playing Uncharted. And I remember she was watching Uncharted 4. 
And she was like, can I try it? And so she picked it up. And then she was like, ah! <laughs> like, her character's just like, going on. Like, she could control it. It was like, oh my God! Like, it was just like hitting into things. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that, that spatial awareness. And I don't really, it's a skill. Like, genuinely being able to move your camera around as you move in 3D space. Shit's not easy. Uh, right? like, yeah. Um, 3D games and are really hard for people. And getting used to new physics as well. I've noticed that with yeah. friends who've played Rocket League for the first time. Mm-hmm. Because those physics don't feel like they might immediately look like they should. Mm-hmm. And that, that can often be like a massive, no pun intended, curveball for whoever's coming into it. One of my biggest suggestions like to get someone into gaming too, because like I think sometimes we think in our heads too, or it's like introduce them to a game that's kind of easy. But the reality is also that like, it, the game has to be interesting enough to want to learn how to beat it, right? So if the game yeah. is too easy, yeah. or if the game's kind of just like fine, it's like, I, well, I don't care. Why do I want to get good at this game, right? Um, hmm. Whereas I think some puzzle games are really awesome entrances. Like starting with things like, honestly, I know it's basic, but genuinely, depending on how new they are to games, like sitting someone down with Tetris is like a really good way to get. I knew you were gonna say that. Honestly, yeah. though, Tetris and then like yeah, my girlfriend I don't, I don't I, disagree. Yeah, we went to Puyo Puyo too. Actually, that was one that like on the Nintendo Switch Online, and she was like into that game. Um, <laughs> and to the point was it's funny. Like I was always beating her in Puyo Puyo, but then we started playing Tetris. Um, was it Tetris Effect, the new one that was on Game Pass that you could compete? And just, ah, she fucking beats me now, and I'm. Look, I'm good at Tetris, all right? <laughs> I win. I, I have won many games of Tetris 99. And, like, I'm good at this game. <laughs> Damn! I she forgot got that good. was the thing. Oh, I play Tetris they made 99 Tetris all Battle the time. Royale. It's incredible. I that in my head. <laughs> it's incredible unless you get a ton of Japanese names in, in your game. And then you're like, oh, no, I'm going to die. Because <laughs> they're very, very good. <laughs> they're very good. Oh, man. But anyway, like. I, speaking yeah. of. Sorry, Paola. Yeah. Oh, that uh, fun fact! My mom. It is very hard to get her to pick up a controller, but from what I've heard, she actually loved to play Pac-Man back in the day. Mm-hmm. Okay. So maybe like I was thinking like more 2D games or games that you don't Arcade-y. need to move the camera uh, around as much. I'd uh, like good entry ways to people to play video games. Um, yeah. uh, it also depends on what kind of games they want to play because like um, if they want something more like re- like um, relaxing or like um, or more casual. I think like Animal Crossing, it, it is like a wonderful game that pretty much anyone can pick up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, th- I think the core is, is not even easy but simplicity in terms of getting in um, and because it's such a sedate yeah. pace animal crossing works for that tetris it's directions and one maybe two buttons mario kart and, and to be fair wii sports and, and by extension like mm-hmm. a good chunk of the wii's library and most like of it's not hard to conceptualize yeah well, i mean me, me and my brother play golf with my dad all the time because it's not fucking difficult to conceptualize swinging the golf yeah. but he would interestingly still struggle with what button do I have to press to like make the green show what um, yeah. the topography is like? Yeah. And that would always, even though it says in the corner, it'd be like, right, that's number one, dad, like type thing. Um, my picks really quickly. I mean, the, the Wii stuff would be one. Um, Fall Guys. Oh, because yeah. Because Takeshi's Castle, the video game, so easy to get your head around. And I can't tell you the amount of friends I've sort of pointed in the direction of that or got to play that and who've just like fucking loved it. I have to say, too, um, just to jump in quick, that game, because no, I started ahead. playing it with my partner, that's actually one of the games that it started to teach her how to use the camera as well as self. Because when she started, oh. she she could only just move forward with it, right? It was like There was no extra yeah. camera movement. But then after a while, I was like, see, hun, if you move the camera, too, it's going to make it a little easier. And so, like, it took a while, but, like, eventually she started to, like, get control of that. And because it's such quick bursts, it, it's kind of gratifying when you get good at the camera because you get better at the game, right? And equally, starting, you can play a lot of the early rounds of that game because it's run forward yeah. without manipulating yeah. the camera at all. And when you get to it, it gets way easier. So, like, there was that um, season two level with the spinning bits with the pink spikes. Mm. And uh, if you tip your camera all the way forward, you can see what's coming and they're, they're just a fucking cakewalk. But so that they, there's a gradient in there. The other one as well, and I know it's one, I don't know if you've played it, Dragon. I, I think both of you have uh, a short hike. 
Mm. I think that would be an amazing game yeah. just to sit someone new down with for an hour and a half and just say, come and thank me when you're finished, sort of thing. I think that <laughs> that's mm-hmm. I think it's an excellent game to give to someone who isn't familiar with the medium mm. because it's so easy to grasp, it's full of charm. There's not really many inputs. And because there's no combat, it's all at your own pace. So there's no like, ah, what the fuck yeah. am I doing? Sort of thing. Like, yeah. I think that game's you perfect. Know what, you know what game I have, have an unusual uh, acceptance uh, rate that I didn't mm-hmm. think it was going to? Uh, Papers, Please. I don't know if you guys know oh, the game. Yeah, I totally get that, though. I wouldn't have thought of it, but I totally get it. Because uh, I, I mostly had uh, success with that game with people that uh, read a ton of novels that really like to get into a concept, like... Yeah. Because it's so narrative focused, and then you just you you lose. If you don't know how to play, you will lose that game. But you can take your time also, and you will fail, and you can start again. It's not a real issue. But that's almost sort of the point. If you take a long time, then like you're tied into the do I like buy my son's medicine or do I heat the house this week? That is so, such yeah. a history dad game. Like I could so picture like a dad <laughs> being like, oh ho ho, like yeah. into that right. game, you know. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm imagining someone new. You know the bit where um someone tries to jump the barricade and it gives you all the sniper c- controls. Yes, I'm imagining someone new just shitting their pants. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. uh, when the bomb explodes, that just everything closes. Like, mm. you know. <laughs> what did I do? Something. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. You, oh yeah, I was gonna, I was say, just gonna say another like another suggestion too is just like especially when introducing someone to gaming, it's like variety. I think that's one of the big things, right? It's like as much as we might think they might like this game, it's like the variety of genres. Um, I think it's just so helpful, right? It's like get them to play platformers, get them to play puzzles, try them out on a shooter, like try them on Portal, for instance, Portal Two maybe because like you can do yeah, co-op. Right? Portal would be a great one actually. Yeah, hundred percent. Because it's it's like you know it's thinking, but you can also take your time. But then eventually you do need some reflexes. Yes. And like I also think first person um, is a great test to find out. Like you know, Paolo, like you mentioned, like motion sickness, right? Like it's a good mm. way to find out. Like can this person yep. handle it, right? <laughs> yeah. Tell you what, though, that makes me think of another one. Uh, grow home oh, or yeah, grow up, whichever the first one is. I think that'd be a really great one to stop. Although, if they fall off the thing and then they have to climb all the way back up again, I still think the right person, even as a as a novice, could really get a kick out of that. Though. One that um, <laughs> my partner and I played to completion was the new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe Ultimate Extra, whatever the hell it's called, oh, okay. edition. Yeah, yeah um, on the Switch, <laughs> yeah. just because you can bubble when you fuck up. Um, oh yeah, and that I have to say, that's really good because it's actually hard to play that game with two people because you're like even i'm like who's pretty good would be like yeah. jump and then suddenly my partner's like on my head by accident I'm like no yeah. <laughs> or i accidentally <laughs> kill her um, but like that's a great game to get used to platformers you know it gets kind of tough but like because you can do that bubbling it's it's kind of good you know uh, hmm. thinking in terms of um rpgs i can't think like of an easier rpg than pokemon as much of yeah, yeah. That's fair. As much as I scream like against the game, the the newer games, uh, there are still like a really easy place to start if you are interested in trying that genre. Yeah, yeah. The thing with Pokemon is that there is it mechanically, but I don't know if someone that doesn't know about Pokemon franchise will get into Pokemon. It's hard to get into Pokemon. I failed horribly at getting my partner into it. I tried. Oh yeah, that's that's the thing. But Although, I think you're right. Probably. I yeah. left field pick. I think Final Fantasy four could be quite a good one. It's, I suspect six might be better, but four is very linear. Um, it's not very difficult. There's Counter- a lot of variety in that. It's very story yeah. focused. Counter. I mean, I haven't Golden played Sun. four. I, if you say so, I've never played it. I couldn't tell you. Golden Sun. Yeah, like any... Oh yeah, sorry. I haven't sorry. played it yet. No. Like uh, any term base. I am so sorry. No, 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 it's okay, Paula. Go ahead, go ahead. No, really, I've talked enough. Go ahead. Any turn based? Yeah. Uh, that I was gonna say, like any turn based, uh, any turn based RPGs, like a uh, good way to get into RPGs in the sense of you have time yeah. to make decisions. Uh, from what I play, I played Final Fantasy One. Um, tried Final Fantasy Two and said to hell with it. But yeah. what I from what I can do, like, uh, they're like really uh, simplistic and to the point. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. At least a turn based Final Fantasy. And Dragon Quest. Counter, I... counter. Oh, sorry. Oh, Go ahead. and 
I haven't played the newer Dragon Quest, but I play like the first two on mobile. Mm. And they are like fairly short. And I. The only thing that would worry me, like, to play like the older ones is like availability. But I think some are getting like re releases. Mm. Nine could be good as well because people love the shit out of that. Yeah, so I haven't played that one. I'd also say Dragon Quest games are like. Test how much they know about anime and tropes. <laughs> like that's what I mm. <laughs> you know? Okay, that's fair. Because there's some shit in Dragon Quest Eleven when I was playing where I was like, "All oh, right, we're in cat suits again. Cool." <laughs> like, it's just, <laughs> 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 you know? and like I can see you set this up with someone who knows nothing, and they're like, "What am I playing?" <laughs> <laughs> Burn it gets I away from me. <laughs> yeah, just be like, have you played have you ever watched Dragon Ball? Not Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball. And if they're like, yes, go. Alright, you're fine. Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> the, artist, the artist is the same. Yes, yeah. I know. But yeah. but yeah. I would say Dragon Quest is more like Dragon Ball than Dragon Ball Z. You know what I mean? Don't see. Um, yeah. yeah. You had one on the tip definitely. of your tongue, I think, Dragon. Yeah. You had a uh, counter counter pick. No, the the <laughs> Yeah, the counter counter RPG thing. It's not turn based, but if you are playing with them, I think Secret of Mana would also work. Ooh. Ooh. I just because like that. Pick that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's harder than picking on the menu, but if you want to actually pause and use the menu for matching and stuff, you can. Mm. And there's also just hit. It may work, it may not. That game is like that. But. I think that's ultimately what it comes down to, right? Is like, there's no one game that works. It's like, really, you just have to try them yes. out and, and don't get precious about a game, mm -hmm. right? It's like, if the game's not working, toss it. Like I had so much fun playing Overcooked with my partner. Like we had a blast doing that. Um, and it's like, and then eventually she loved Animal Crossing, you know, like it's, it just kind of depends yeah. on the click. Actually now she's really into uh, Ring Fit with me. Like they're both really fun, you know, like you just mm -hmm. never know what's gonna, what's gonna click and what's not gonna click. Um, yeah. And don't, yep. Yeah, and don't discount the joys of having someone sit and watch you play a game too, because I've discovered that yeah, that yeah. is very enjoyable for a lot of people. I mean, Twitch, right? <laughs> yeah, I was literally yeah. about to say that. Yeah, there's, uh, or you don't need to watch. Maybe you just want to hear some schmucks on the internet talking about their pick. Hey, <laughs> mm. with that, hey. should we move on to the greatest game ever made? <laughs> Wow, Paul has low-key shelved 30 Sentinels, but I guess we could settle for, for how, how long to be the game. The game. The game. <laughs> nice. Um, Let's do it. I sure that. Okay, do you want, should I do this one? Or do you want to do this again, Paula? Do you have it ready? Uh, I'm almost ready. Just let nice. me do the modifiers. Uh, hit his stats. Okay, are you ready? You bet. No. <laughs> Go ahead. The <laughs> Lord of the Rings, the battle for Middle Earth. Oh no! Oh, is that <laughs> that one? It's two one. Yep. No, this is a battle. Well, yeah, but it's a PC game. Um, this is a this is an it RTS. Is like this is a real time strategy game. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, it yes. is. It's, yeah, this oh is like God. Empire at War. This yes. like the Star Wars one. Yeah, it's it's an RTS. Ah, Lord Almighty. I had this on my PC. Battle Familiar Earth 2 is a much better game. But Battle Familiar Earth is a good game. I remember the box oh, art. Oh, it's too. the first one. Yeah, this is the first one, right? Yeah, oh, a oh, real time oh. strategy video I didn't game. I know about the first like, one. Yay, Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> RTSs are insane, though, because it's like, how do you even count the time? I don't know how long these are. Um, I have no idea. You usually count of like for like the main campaign I just, and stuff I'm like guessing. that. Yeah, I can't it's remember about online if servers. I, I legitimately think we maybe want to re-roll that. Uh, do we re-roll and pretend it's never happened? If you're happy to edit it out, then yeah. 100%. I mean, we 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 have more obscure games though. It's not even that it's obscure. It looks like it was online only. It wasn't on PS2 at all. It was Windows only. Um, and it, it's, it talks about the official game servers were permanently closed. I don't know how much of a single player component there was. I can't remember if there was a single player component to this one. Um, hold uh, on. Um, let me, let me, there let me... are, it says the good, and evil mid, the good and evil forces each had a campaign. I take that back. Yeah. There was a campaign in this game. I don't know. I say we go for, oh, that box art brings me back. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, don't, don't let me bitches out. Let's have a crack at this. One. No, let's do it. Um, <laughs> 
Yeah, shit. Okay. I remember this campaign. I don't. <laughs> Never played it. <laughs> yeah, I did play it. I, I was a major Lord of the Rings nerd, like hardcore. Um, right, well, everybody everybody, type their guesses into the text. I'm going to think about Age of Empires and say the same. <laughs> oh, yeah, shit. What was Age of Empires? <laughs> oh, no. Okay. <laughs> The thing is about Age of Empires, the three games have very different length campaigns, so... Yeah. It's the same for Warcraft. Uh, and when the question this is, game come does out? Main consider this to be just the one campaign or both the campaigns? Wow, that's the that's the beauty of this uh, of this show. You oh, don't no. know. Mm. I, 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 I you no said idea. there are two campaigns? I don't. Apparently, both the good and evil forces of Middle Earth have their own campaigns. Yeah, yeah. That is uh, a guessing... pretty interesting piece of information. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah right. I mean, I think that's an important piece of info. Oh, I've revised my times way down. Actually, thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I won't talk about numbers. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not until we're locked Which in. Which year is the, this game from? The oh four. Uh, it's oh four. It's an old game. Oh four. Okay. Oh, for... but not that old. Well, fifteen years old. <laughs> uh, Sixteen. It's uh, it could um, it could legally join the army in the. UK. Oh yeah, or oh, actually seventeen, I guess technically. Sorry, yeah, because uh, twenty twenty one now. <laughs> oh boy. Um, wow, we're taking a while to figure this out. I I, I just yeah. Jesus, I don't know. I'm not gonna get this. It's a rough one. I'm not gonna get this right yet. I feel like the two campaigns makes it trickier as well. That's why you're saying. I, I feel like I'm <laughs> underselling this. Like I think I'm. I think I'm on the l too low end. But then I'm worried that I'm not high enough yet for. All right, are we ready to do this? I am. Uh, sure. All right. Sure. Three, three, two, two one. So. I the times put, are all over the place. They yeah. are actually as well. So I've I've put eight hours main, fourteen hours main plus. I've got main Alex seven put, hours, main plus eighteen hours. So like just both sides of me. Mm -hmm. Paola's oh. put thirteen hours main, twenty five hours main plus, and uh, and Dragon. And I went for the three things. <laughs> Yeah, I have 10 for main, 13 for main plus, and 17 for 100 because I want the five hour leeway. It seems like a good strat. I, I'm going to yeah. say this right Someone's now. Someone's been paying attention. No Someone way in hell 100% is for 17 me. hours. <laughs> no. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, I hope it's uh -oh. 21. Uh -oh. Some video happening with my computer. But All it right. happened. It's okay. I can bring it. it up. So, you ready, Put everybody? Out of misery. Do it. <laughs> we all suck. So, the battle for Middle Earth, main story, 27 and a half hours. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Main okay. plus extra, 31 hours. Completionist, 39 and a half hours. <laughs> yeah, we I'll just have... guess that uh, for the main, they are going to be like both, the both sides of the they're campaign. They're definitely counting both sides of the campaign. Yeah. Um, and they're big boy campaigns as well. Apparently. Holy smokes. I remember this game a bit though. Like you, you were on kind of like a map, and like you had to go to like main missions, but you had to fight skirmishes along the way to like stop people from like invading and approaching oh. your territory. Yeah, it's it was a really really good game. Like honestly, uh, I I really enjoyed this game, but it's a it's a bit it's a bit of a toughie. Um, Hang on, you yeah. knowing that still put seven hours for the main. Yeah, um, but listen, my dude, I beat this game. <laughs> In 2005 or six, right? Like that was a long time ago. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, deity me! Uh, all right, well, that was it um, for this week's <laughs> episode. Sorry, yeah. that sounded so. That's it. No one got any points, and no points on the guest board. <laughs> um, it means I'm still in the lead. That's still in the lead. Yes, me. Rick at 20, Alex at 15, Paula at 10, guests at a lowly zero. Sorry, Dragon, you tried. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey this is a tough I, one you can you, yeah you guys can make up for it i cannot yeah that's true <laughs> but don't worry the guests the guests are all going to tally together um so that'll be a thing um all right. <laughs> sorry next, next guest <laughs> yeah sorry next guest. <laughs> thank you everyone for tuning in to this slightly larger episode not su super larger but in our first guest episode we'll be back next week with the regular gang and we'll have a guest again hopefully in a Ooh. few weeks 
Oh, I lost you there right at the end. It's too late to matter, but... <laughs> uh, don't worry. I was still okay on my end, so it means that I recorded fine. <laughs> Fuck me, you were fine. See you guys. All right, see you later, everybody. Until next week. Yeah. See you all next week. Bye. Dun, dun.